Hey everyone, thanks for watching, tuning in. I just wanted to come on here today and say hey and uh, wish everyone happy holidays. That is Merry Christmas and uh, hope you had a Thanksgiving, good Thanksgiving. <clears throat> and uh, so I'm going to come on here today and kind of go over some of the things that uh, I have been talking about in uh, uh, on Facebook. Some of you do not have... Uh, the access to some of those things and I wanted to bring some of those things out and uh, so uh, once again Merry Christmas uh, thanks for uh, tuning in and we hope that uh, you and your family the best and we hope that uh, you have loved ones that are lost uh, that you have lost and we just uh, pray that God would uh, Fill that void with as much happiness as, as possible uh, for you and your family. So anyhow, I want to start out with uh, a couple things that we, we have put out there on Facebook. And so that you can kind of get caught up on what we're talking about here. Uh, let's see, let me bring this up so I can read it. Um, so let's see here. Uh, one of those, uh, we talked about simple salvation. And, and at the onset here, if, if you have watched my videos, then you would know that I have said once before, maybe multiple times, that I don't know, um, I, me personally, do not know if Paul of Tarsus wrote the books that are proclaimed that he did. Um, I don't, and I, what I mean by that, I don't know if he is the author, not him physically writing or dictating to someone else who wrote it, okay? And, and the, the measure uh, of error that would be in any translations. So um, in one sense, I am not attacking Paul in any way unless he is the actual author of those things written that violates the commands and the very nature and the purpose of Jesus Christ. So uh, I just want to make that clear before, and I know people have written me off and, you know, but that's the, uh, uh, what do you call it? The sacred, uh, don't, don't ever talk about uh, this. And, uh, you know, uh, you'd be expelled from, from any uh, authority or uh, uh, validation at all if you go against, anything written in the Bible. Well, you know, <laughs> I will just tell you that not everything written in the Bible is for us to do. It is a history, and do I do I have this large overall view that yes, it should be in the Bible? Uh, I, I could I am I'm very attuned to believing that, okay? Um, some things maybe, maybe not, but I'm not going to make a, a battle over any of that. What I am attuned to is the fact that if it's in there, um, I guess in the God is all knowing and everything and all power, uh, he allowed it to be in there, but it doesn't mean he allowed it to be in there for us to follow it. It means that he allowed to be in there for our admonition, right? Our warning, uh, the things that other people did that clearly violates the teaching of Jesus, such as many of the books that are attributed to Paul or those that have written about him, such as Acts. There are very many of these things. And, and we I'm just going to go through some of this stuff. And again, I am a, a bit uh, reserved in, this, in the fact that, yes, do I think that there are areas that are blatantly out of focus of who Jesus was? Do I think there's competition of the writer, whether it be authority of Paul or someone else making that statement, those statements about Paul, uh, pitting him against Jesus? And many of you, and I know some of you personally, who would take Paul and you are taking it. The, the religious world is taking Paul over Jesus. Paul is your Jesus. He has replaced Jesus. You, you, you no longer serve Jesus, but you serve Paul, who you claim to be an apostle, which is not 
scripturally, as we have it today, uh, validated uh, outside of Paul or whoever has written. And I'm going to just say Paul from here on out so that you understand whether it was Paul himself who stated these things and it came from his mindset or it was someone else propping up Paul. So I'm just going to say Paul and you can make those connections whether what is true or not, whether he himself was taking authority or someone else was placing it on him for the reader. So when I say Paul, just understand I'm not personally attacking Paul if he was not the authority to make these things written the way that they were. So anyhow, if he was, then so be it. Uh, it, it, it applies to him, then, then he is just man. He is not God. He is not Jesus. Um, he is not my representation of Jesus. Jesus is a spirit. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must, not optional, worship him in spirit and in truth. And, and, and many people say, oh, the Bible is truth. That is a lie. The Bible is not truth. Jesus himself is truth. And he sends the spirit of truth to us. That it, who? The spirit of truth. Jesus' spirit, the Holy Ghost, would lead and guide us into all truth and righteousness. And I just want to uh, really quickly... Uh, go to a scripture that I have, I have shared with many over and over again. Um, I believe it to be 1 John 2nd chapter. Um, verse 26. And it says, These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him, who, Jesus, abideth in you. It lives in you, and ye need not that any man, only God, any man teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you, what is the anointing? It is the Spirit of God, okay? Uh, teacheth you of all things. And who said, God, the Father, will send the Holy Ghost? And Jesus said, whom I will send. So one and the same, God, Jesus, sends the Holy Ghost. It is the spirit of truth. And he goes on, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things and is truth. And is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Abide, live in him. Uh, so that's where we're at today. That's where we're coming from. We don't live under a priesthood. We don't live under a law of man. We don't live under the law of Moses that has been gone, that has been abolished. And I know so many people are like, oh, we're still, we have to do the Ten Commandments. Well, no, 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 we don't. We, we're going to be led by the Spirit. He will lead and guide us. Uh, we, we're to do what John 3, uh, 3 through 5, 3 through 8 said, Jesus, you must be born again. There's no alternative. There's no choice. And, and to, to be able of the spirit and of the, okay? So of the flesh has to be reborn. The, 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 of the water and of the spirit, we have to be reborn. We have to be recycled in our intentions, of serving God, we have to repent and be baptized. And 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 whether I I I am I am still studying very hard. I have been baptized in Jesus' name physically. And 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 I, I those that have opportunity to do that, to do that, I adjure you to do that. However, I am still studying and seeking God that that physical baptism. That may not be possible for some. Is it a requirement or was that the renewing of your mind? And, and, and if we want to go with some of the words of, of Paul's talking about the baptism for the conscience sake. So if, if you need that, and that, that's what that appears to me to be saying. Okay, uh, so when Jesus said, I 
but God seeks such to worship him in spirit and in truth. It means that the ordinances, the physical, now, now Jesus, understand, he was still under the law. He was in that, that frame of the law. And then you've got Jesus, and then you've got grace, okay, which is where we're at. So at what point did that change? Um, to me, it doesn't matter because I'm way past that change. That's where I live. That's where you live today. So anyhow, again, I want to just read some of these things here. Um, simple salvation. Does Jesus really want us to spend our lives or upend our lives to be what was intended by man to be or become evangelists? Uh, that a lot of you will do the work of an evangelist, uh, make full proof of thy ministry. What ministry do you have outside of witnessing for Jesus? These are things that man has put in here through the writings of Paul, what they call letters of the churches, okay? What church? Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We actually know that Jesus was not talking about a physical building, even a group of people. His church was a spiritual. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. So if you want to be part of that kingdom here on earth, it is spiritual man, not your physical. None of that outside of when Jesus talked to the scribes and Pharisees saying, hey, you know, you, you, you are like whited sepulchers. You know, the things that hold these bodies and shrines and these big old uh, concrete uh, boxes out there that in the, in the uh, graveyards, that, that, that is a sepulcher. That is what he's talking about. Outside, they are all white and beautiful. Beautification done to these in, in, the, in the physical. They look great. But inside, they are filled with dead man's bones and every nasty thing because the body is decaying. So if you live only in the flesh, if you live, if you serve God only in a building, only in what they call a church today, if you serve him only in a corporate setting of, of, of what we consider religion today, you are not serving Jesus at all. Um, that can't be your connection to God. That is not a connection to God, okay? So when you look at that, and when, when, when the writings say you gotta submit yourself under the higher powers and stuff, uh, well, some of that stuff, we know that if we go up and tell a cop no or start trouble with a cop, we face death sudden and immediate death, depending on what we provoke, right? And what, what danger they feel they have. Well, there's some common sense there, right? I, if, a, if a cop with a gun tells me to do something, even though I have rights and he may be going against them, I'm going to wait for my day in court. I'm going to do what they say, unless it's contrary to me breaking the law of God, of course, right? Denying Jesus. Um, then it will be what it will be, right? So, here we are. Uh, now you should ask yourself, what is a witness? What Jesus said that we had to be, a witness. Uh, the witness must experience God, must experience salvation through Jesus Christ uh, to be a witness. Uh, what did Jesus do for you? Well, what he's done for me, he healed my son from bone disease. I know it was him. I won't go into all that, but he's healed me physically from a sore throat, just like that over prayer. I know what God can do. It is just the, just two of the, of, of the larger areas that God has, has changed and, 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 and been on my side and benefit me and my life and my family for. So I'll just give you that real quick. But where are we today? When you look at those things, uh, let's, let's continue reading. You are to tell your story and love God and follow his spirit. You were never commissioned by Jesus to join a club we now call churches, okay? Rather simply, you were never commissioned, okay, what we talked about. Um, you're simply to live a more abundant life through his spirit. Loving God and your neighbor as yourself, having goodwill toward all, teaching and witnessing 
Now, teaching doesn't come by lip service. Jesus said, you, you worship me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. And, and again, we go back to that, the whited sepulchers. Oh, you want to appear holy. You want to appear good. But inside, you hate your brother. Inside, you judge wrongfully those that are innocent. Um, so to live our lives to our family the way God originally intended it to be, the utter best of our ability, we have to give God what we can and, and the best we can, and that's what we are judged for. Doing this under the John 3, um, 5 through 8, will assure our ticket to heaven, okay? So looking at that, and I want to I go over here to, a, to another writing. Uh, was there a, so let, let me go back. Finding Jesus, all right? Uh, the deception of man is the greatest danger Jesus spoke of in finding God. It's simple to go to Matthew 24 and you see, Lord, what's, what's the signs of the end times? What, what's going to happen when when can we can we know that that you're coming and your 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 uh, presence is near? When this whole thing's going to get wrapped up? And Jesus' first warning out of his mouth was not, "Oh, beware the devil is a worrying lion. He's going to you know searching to whom he may destroy and 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 you know uh, adultery and all these other things." No, Jesus said, "Beware of man deceiving you." Now, to me, I'm going to convert that simply re beware of religion. Beware of these men. Beware of, of, of these people that, that have nothing better to do than, than offer deception to you. And, and, and you, you can go with me to... to um, these areas, you can go Matthew 23 and 23. Uh, you can see that, that woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Uh, you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, faith, and these ought ye to have done and not to leave others undone. He's not saying that he validates everything that they're doing. And he's talking about a subject here. And he's saying... What you're doing may not all be bad. It's not, it's not necessary, but it's not violating anything to hurt people. But he said those things that you are doing or you're leaving out, such as love, you're not giving it from the heart. Um, so anyhow, all you've got to do is go to Matthew 23 and start aligning, aligning those things that Jesus talks about up with what religion is today, okay? Man's greatest danger Jesus spoke of is finding God uh, with, through the deception of man uh, to run from that. So who was John speaking of through the Spirit of God when he, it was said, and thou hast tried them, which say they are apostles, and this is Revelation 2 and 2, and you'll see, uh, and are not. They, who, who would you say that self-proclaimed themselves to be an apostle and 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 we don't have any validation that he was and that would be paul people automatically say oh the apostle paul he was not an apostle not according to the text that i'm privy to and has found them liars could that be now that may be a spirit that jesus is talking about just the spirit of man that wants to control and, and make themselves and there are many in these religious sects out there claiming themselves to be apostles. Oh, they make themselves, oh, gee, go. <laughs> I cannot urge you enough to go and, and, and <laughs> find yourself some, some area to, to go and, and study. Just read through what the apost or what, what Jesus is saying to the scribes and Pharisees. What is he saying to them? Jesus is telling them that, that oh, you, you love. And I, I, I wish I 
could have been there. I wish I had a recording of the way that Jesus said it. You love to make yourself important. You love to sit in high places. You love your long phylacteries and, 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 and your, your pins and ex insignia. Oh, look how holy and special I am. You know, it doesn't take long. If you read the books that uh, the Gospels of what Jesus said, the parables that he laid out, when he said, oh, the one man, oh, he was in there praying. Now, he, he's just, he just showing you what, what, what was known at the time. Jesus is not making the future way, the way you're supposed to worship him because that would, be, that would be different from what he said to do. He said to not give uh, your... your uh, speeches over and over and, 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 and duplication and those things. But he said that this man was, oh, well, look how great I am. Look, oh, God, I don't do as this sinner here. Uh, I, don't, I don't do as he does. And I, I, I pray three times a day. I fast and, and I give my alms before the people to be seen of men, Jesus said. But yet the sinner, the person that had humility, who knew what he was, not being faked by the fake things on the outside, that whited sepulcher that the scribe was, was manifesting himself to before God, saying, oh, look, I do all these things. I give of my, my money. I do all this stuff. And then the sinner, Jesus says, the, the, he, he, the Pharisee called him a sinner. And, and he's like, oh, who this sinner here? And, and, and Jesus said, in the end, who do you think was more righteous? Who do you think was more appealing to God? Who do you think God heard? It was not the scribe or Pharisee. It was not the one that was supposedly doing things because he didn't do it from the heart. He did not do it the way that God had said to do it because he knew where he was. But you see, the, the, the religious, the one who followed ordinances, the one who, who had religion was not pleasing to God. And, and, and we've, we've brought the scripture out several times about how that in vain they worship me. In vain they give lip service. They sing incredible songs, but their heart is far from me. They are not doing it. They are not doing it to please me or serve me. That's what Jesus was talking about. And it wasn't about all that. So when, when you look at those things, that, that's not Jesus. You're not, you're not pleasing God. So as, as we go forward again, and I'm just going to continue reading, uh, the profound writings, writings of Paul were blatantly contrary to what Jesus taught and just simply cannot be squared to Jesus' teaching. The very things Jesus railed against by example of Matthew 23 and other gospel parallels, contradicts such mindsets and interest of who and what Jesus was all about. That's a fact. If you'll read it, you'll, you'll see for yourself. That is exactly what we're seeing here. Okay? So, um, and it's laced within and through readings of the writings you find things that jump right out at you as being hard to believe and, and let me just spur up here where even peter said things paul said was hard to be understood i kind of think that maybe that hard to be understood was part of the whole deal of unbelievable this this dude doesn't know jesus and might i add real quick here that all through Paul's writings, and again, as I said, whether it was Paul or someone else, that's what we're talking about, the letters to the church, as it's called. Um, all through those, where 
do you see Paul, your claimed apostle Paul, writing anything of quotes that Jesus said? Now some say, well, Paul didn't meet Jesus. No, but he tried to validate himself in Acts 15 and through Acts to the church and the elders. He tried to validate himself to say that he was accepted, his own admission, to say he was accepted by them. Okay, whether they were bamboozled might be my own personal opinion, but side to point from today's uh, lesson. Um, even the elect could be led away. And I believe that's what happened there. I believe that, that some were, were had their doubts but went along with it because they had nothing else to offer, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but anyhow, as again, Peter stated that things hard to be understood. I take that as hard to be believed, really. Um, so anyhow, even the, fair, the, the very parallel version of a man named Paul, he placed himself, the writer placed him on par with Jesus. And, and, and I will offer another um, history fact. That throughout those times of writings, people put Jesus at the forefront of the writings. And could this be, could this be why Jesus is talked about but never quoted? Because this was this man's following that he wanted. And Jesus just had to be in there to sell the book, to sell the story. And this was very well known that people who were not as popular, had to bring other people who were popular to read the story. So let me just throw that out there. You must consider all things knowing that this is for the keeping of your soul. Search the scripture for in them you think you have eternal life. You, it is up to you and I to prove out what that good and acceptable and perfect will of God is. So here we are. If you read the book of Acts and you see the conversion of Paul and you see the parallel of a man who's trying to make himself as Jesus. At the end, if you read, if, if we had a concise story outside the four parallel, three parallel Gospels and, and, and the whole story of Jesus, and we were to word them about the same uh, length, and we were to tell the story of Jesus, and we were to tell the story of Paul, that what you would have is two great people. And, and, and Paul makes no... Uh, no puns about it that that you know he 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 did he did he did whatever the writer again going back to i don't know that it was paul but i know it was written this way and i will tell you that it is all about paul when it should be all about jesus there is pixie dust throughout those scriptures that that, oh, but it's through Jesus. If I live, it's Jesus. If I live, blah, blah, blah. You know what? If I need to keep you engaged, I'm going to speak about the subject that engages you. So there you go. You must figure this out for yourself. So again, the parallel version of, of both conversion, his conversion, his representation, he even tries to validate himself that, oh, I, the church accepted me and, and, and Peter, who we know, you know, that Jesus gave the, the, uh, uh, the kingdom, the keys to the kingdom. And Paul even tries to usurp that, hey, I'm, I'm the guy that bringing this message to the Gentiles. But Peter 
was already chosen to do that. And Paul could not come in and take that spot away by no means. Uh, I'm staying with Jesus, and you should too. So again, representation, authority, redemption through his own words, and the convinced of those that wrote of him. Okay? Churches today must play on these. This, this, this plays right into religion because this is what Paul brought. This is what the writer of Paul brought. Uh, again, I, and I'm not going to keep reiterating this, whether it's Paul or those that wrote this of a Paul that maybe was true or was not true. I, I can't attest to that. Okay? What I do attest to is the, it, the, is the Gospels of Jesus. And, and I attest that for myself. Because if those words of Jesus are untrue, if there are variances in those words, then nothing Paul says after, nothing anyone else says after can be validated. So it comes down to, is this Jesus or is it not Jesus? Do we have hope or do we not have hope? So you, can, you will have to make that decision for me. I've made the decision that Jesus is my hope. And, and let's continue on. Um, so churches today must play on these, their antichrist versions of the letters to convince you the different difference of what Jesus taught and otherwise they would not have any validity. Whosoever, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. They that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth, stating he is truth, and the Holy Ghost who shall come and fill you is the spirit of truth, and it will speak of him and glorify him only, make all other contrary writings heretical, okay? That's what that does, and you will not find that preached. You may find it quoted, but it won't be the message, the message is for you to be an evangelist and bring people to man's kingdom to build the church, make it richer, make it more in the form of, hey, we got to offer people. We got to bring people in. You don't save anyone. Neither does the church, so-called religion. It cannot save. Only Jesus saves. And this is a problem today. And uh, so if you're following the church lifestyle today under man and your Jesus would have to be Paul of Tarsus, not the one true saving God. All right. So let's 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 go forward. And again, I, I am just bringing these things to your attention. Uh, I wanted to bring this out uh, on video uh, so that I can further explain the fact that I'm not saying Paul. Personally, if it wasn't true of what was written of him, was an error. But I can tell you what was written of him is of error. First, what Jesus said and his purpose and what we know of Jesus in the Gospels. That is contrary. That is religion. Jesus is life. All right. So who was the apostle to the Gentiles? Okay. Who was the apostle to the Gentiles? Many teach it to be Paul, as we've discussed. Is it? Let's talk truth. You know how that a good while ago, God made choice among us. This is Peter speaking in Acts 15 and 7. That the Gentiles, by my mouth, Peter's mouth, should hear the word of the gospel and believe. All right? It started with Peter. Jesus backed it. It was Peter who also had a vision of the converted Gentiles, right? The four-footed beast and what God called clean is clean indeed, and don't you call it unclean. So when God began to pour out the Holy Ghost, the same as we received the Holy Ghost, Peter says, that uh, God was behind this. And who are we to say that they are not saved? Okay, and, and if you read Acts 15, you'll see that there was a big disturbance that the, the sect of the Pharisees, which Paul's dad was and Paul was uh, a Pharisee, uh, and, and 
the sect of the Pharisees who believed the Bible said. So I, I have to understand that they were converted. However, they weren't leaving that, that, that old law of Moses. Because when it was reported that the Gentiles, Acts 10, uh, that, that the Holy Ghost was poured out on them and, and, and the, the same results came about the same way that we know we got the Holy Ghost, for they spoke in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. We saw this with their own eyes that God has poured out and done the same thing to them as they did for us. And then you got the sect of these Pharisees that came back who did not clean, cleanse themselves or separate themselves from the law and come into the grace of Jesus, which is what religion is today. They have not accepted the grace and love of God. They have built their own kingdoms. They have held on. They have held on to the standards of the laws of Moses. It has been abolished. It is replaced by Jesus, a new covenant a new and living way. And, and you, you, you want to go through Acts 15, you'll see that, that it was, it was um, I believe it was James, or even Peter maybe, that, that said, our fathers, and we couldn't even keep the commandments under the law. We couldn't do it. Because that law was not perfect. It was never perfect, never going to be. The perfection came when that, behold, the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sins of the world, arrived on scene by John the Baptist, pronounced. And Jesus said, there's not a greater prophet ever than John the Baptist. That included Moses. That inclu included Abraham. That included every other one, Elijah, all others. And it was John the Baptist. Why was it John the Baptist? Because he made way the opening for Jesus Christ and that grace that he brought to us, only Jesus, all right? So here we are, Acts 15, Jesus backed. It was Peter who had the vision. It was Peter that Jesus gave the keys to the opening of the kingdom, not any other man, okay? So it was his words, not Paul's words. It was Jesus' words that he manifested through his spirit to Peter on the day of Pentecost, when it was fully come, when the time had come to expose and bring forth the gift of the eternal God himself. And that was through the Holy Ghost. And Jesus said Peter would be the one to have the keys, not another who should come later or after. So no validity for Paul by Jesus to be designated apostle to the Gentiles. No more than you and I are today. That is in your Bible. That is in the scriptures that you have available to you and I. Yet you are lied to by the reading and teaching of these churches today. They, they lie to you and they will say that it is Paul to justify their own existence and their own man worldly kingdoms of the flesh when Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Okay, But they need you. They need these scriptures. They need the old law to pull you back. They need the old law to bring in that money to make themselves great. Okay, Back to the scribes and Pharisees in Matthew 23. Oh, they love to sit in high places. They love to wear their long phylacteries. They love the insignia. They love the office and the title. They love to be over you. They love to pile burdens on your shoulders that are not of God, that in no way dictate your salvation at all. Okay? Again, you are lied to of a fake kingdom of God to justify their power authority, their ungodly gain, such as tithes, fake tithing mandates, which has nothing to do with a true follower of Christ. It's heretical. It's ordinances that were never meant to be under Jesus Christ. And he is the only way you and I can be saved. So if you don't come to Jesus, you're the same as a thief and a robber. 
and you will not make it to heaven. So you have to cling to truth. And the only truth there is, is Jesus. Following his spirit that he places in us through the obedience and repentance. The sacrifices of God, Psalms 51, David said, are broken and a broken and a contrite spirit that God will not despise. A broken heart. And Hebrews tells us in 13, 15, by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Not an altar. If you think you have something to, to give Christ in a sacrifice, only sacrifice we have was Jesus Christ. And if you go kneel at an altar at a church, it is a man-made ordinance that is brought over from the Old Testament. It's not even, you're not even bringing an animal to slay. You're not even living up to the tabernacle side of Moses' law. You're coming forward. You're kneeling, they say, at the feet of Jesus. Jesus isn't there. Jesus isn't in an ordinance. Jesus isn't made with hands. David said, oh, Lord, let me build you a house. And God said, David, what house can you build me? Knowing that heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house could you possibly build me? And Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. It is not of your five senses. But this you have to understand, all right? The masked entertainment, churches today have, have nothing but a venue. Churches are little more than a venue. It's all about titles. It's about a corporate greed. It, it's, it's about who's who. What do you think the whole platform is? Do you not see the, the parallel that Jesus said you love sitting in high places? Are you kidding me? Does that not jump out at you? Does that not just go in the face of Jesus? Does that not just make Jesus want to flip over the money changers tables? Does that not connect with you? See, here's the problem. See, people just want to be important. They feel lonely. They want, to, they want to go to church because there's people there that'll tell them anything they need to know. That'll, and some, some may be genuine, and that's, that's kind of the hard part for some people. Some, some are genuine because they're just led astray, and they, they actually believe it. But, but let me tell you something. Let me tell you the stark words of Jesus. When he said, the blind... If they lead the blind, they both fall into the ditch. He didn't say the one deceiving, the deceived, that the deceiver is not going to make it. But he also said they're both going into the ditch. Now, I don't know how clear that can be. It's up to you and I to seek God and allow him to be God and not seek man, and not to seek religion, and allow them to deceive you. This is a problem. What are the things that, that fall, make man fall? The pride of life? What, what are they? The pride of the eyes? The, the, the eyes? These things draw our heart from God. If any man have a love for the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You want to be on the platform. You want to sing, and you call it singing unto the Lord, and you call it all this stuff. It's not singing unto the Lord. If your heart ain't with God, and you're dabbling in church religion, let me tell you, and, and that's what gets you going, and, 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 and you have to have that instead of a relationship with Jesus Christ. You can't lift your hands to heaven and feel his spirit. There's a problem. You are not connected. You are not connecting to Jesus Christ. Because if you do that, he will. 
He said, if any man hunger and thirst after righteousness, he shall be filled. If you're not filled, if you have to go to choir practice, if you have to listen to one more service, because you've got to be beaten into religious activity and beaten into, into, into holiness because, oh, my God, my flesh is killing me. If that is you, you don't have a relationship with Jesus. You're, you're going to be that person that says, God, have we not, have we, have we not cast out demons? Has my church not, have, 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 People that come to you, we've cast out demons, and, and Lord, we've, we've done this, and we've done that, and we, we fed the poor, we did it. And Jesus said, I never knew you. How does that happen? How can that be? If he doesn't know you, why? Because your heart, it was just your lip service. It was you being a part of religion. It was you thinking that a pastor, oh, I'm your covering. Oh, I pray for you. That pastor is, is a blasphemer. That religion is blasphemy to God, to what he and his purpose came to do. Did Jesus say, oh, well, you're going to have to follow after Peter. He's going to choose some people. And No, it's not the Old Testament. It's not when Moses died and, and God told Joshua that he would make him the, the secondary and the per, new, new leader. It, we're not in that era. We're under grace through Jesus. One, one, eternal. The one who died and rose and took death, hell, and the grave. Yeah, his choice to make us whole and clean again. Man cannot, will not, and never can, could do what Jesus did. And Jesus never said, I'm going to leave it to this man. And then he's going to leave it to this man. And all oh, the priesthood and this and that is going to continue going. No, it was abolished. Jesus said, when I go away, I will send the comforter unto you. And he said, I go into the Father. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And if I go, I will build a place for you. That where I am, he, God, will be also. How could Jesus be in your house and yet he's in my house? Because he's God all-knowing, omnipresent, everywhere. All power. And Jesus said, all power is given unto me and heaven and earth. Read where John speaks in Revelation. I fell at his feet as dead. It's like I was nothing. I, I was I, I became such a small part. Nothing. He was great. All I could see was him. And that's not what all churchgoers are seeing. They're seeing a pastor. Well, they have to come under. The rule of man to be saved. And oh, that's what they preach to you. That's what they tell you. That's what they're all about. It's their kingdom. Don't you see that? Don't you see that? Jesus talked about vain repetitions. If you got to get to the chorus to lift your hands to Jesus, doesn't that tell you something? If while getting in your car... You haven't already, as soon as you woke up, feel after the Lord? Does that not tell you that your kingdoms are of this world? Your, your treasure. He said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So where's your treasure? Your treasure is in your religion. Your treasure is in your man, that pastor. That, that uh, Sunday school, whatever, that's where your treasure is. It's not of this world, but God's kingdom is not of this world, but of his kingdom in heaven. You have to be spiritual 
not natural. You will not receive it through your flesh. And he said, this people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips. Picture your religion in choir. Picture on the stage, the highlights, all the lights and the, the, the all the, the amplification of your voices. Oh, sounds like heaven. You don't know what heaven sounds like. Jesus said, when you pray, don't be as the hypocrites. Oh, they love, they love to be known by their many words. Through vain, vain repetitions. They love to go out in the public. They love to congregate. They love to walk around in what's called a religious prayer room. They love to pace. Oh, I did it. I know. I've been there. And I felt I was doing God a service. But guess what? I'm not so sure many times God even heard me. So my friend... Even those that would consider themselves enemies, you must be born again of the Spirit and of the water and of life. That life of the Holy Ghost, like a river, shall flow through your belly. A river of life. You cannot stay in the stagnant law of man, where you, my friend, are going to be lost. You're going to be lost. And, and, and there's nothing that can save you when you're lost. And I just want to tell you today that you must, you must be born again of the water and of the spirit. You cannot rely on man. Man will never save you. And, and it will not benefit you one thing without Jesus. And I will tell you today that uh, I will continue praying for those that listen to this ministry. It's just a way of me witnessing to you and giving you what God gave to me and how he opened my eyes and my mind for others to see. And I will just tell you today, go in peace, find the Prince of Peace because he is the only thing and the only one that loves you. And I'm gonna just throw a plug out here, cooking and Jesus.life. You can go out there. We're doing cooking videos. Uh, we're bringing forth the word of God when we can. And, and I just want you to know that, that you can join these things. We don't get nothing out of it. I don't even care if you join it. It's just a good thing to fellowship and, and share recipes and we are just gonna gonna occupy till our master comes and uh, i will say god bless you and i appreciate those that would, would join um we are let me just go here real quick i believe i have uh, let's see here let me just grab this real quick i think i have it all right so Again, go in peace. Uh, let's uh, find the Lord and let him be king of our world. In Jesus' name we pray.